This be Pirate Inferno, and ye be the pirates. Welcome back to Bad Milk. In the last episode, we investigated the beginning of the game, and ended at this segment right here with the back talk. We will now be moving on to the next area in the game. Very choppy transition, but the effect was necessary, apparently. So here we have two different things. Or should I say two different instances. We're going to go with this one first. This phone right here. And of course, apologies for some of the video quality, it is not my fault, but this was made in 2000, remember, so they didn't have the highest quality of video capturing software or hardware, especially for somebody who's an indie developer. And in fact, this whole live footage thing, unheard of. But anyway, if we start messing around here... And you're going to notice that the phone was empty, or should I say there was nobody there. The phone was empty. <laughs> there we are. And just by fooling around a bit, we have triggered a phone call. You will need to find the correct number for the top level of the lock. Move the walking man and watch for his cigar. He may be trying to tell you something. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but he just said find the correct number for the top level of the lock. Now you might have noticed when he coughed while he was walking. Now if we go slower so that it almost looks like he actually is walking. You notice one cigar right there. If we go down a level, nothing. Go down another level, sorry. Nothing. Go down another level, Again, nothing, and on the last level... One there, and... One there. So, as you can see, there are three in total. And he said this should determine the number for the top. There is only one on the top, however... I'm going to be getting into this sooner than later actually we're nearing the end of the puzzle and what was hinted at quite a lot but truthfully it's going to be I wouldn't say devastating but it's going to be more or less confusing to myself and everybody who watches this I don't think anybody's gonna understand what's going on but truthfully let's continue on to Another interesting video, actually. That's probably my favorite transition in the entire game. As you can see, we can either go back or we can go to the final area of the game. That's right, folks. This game is so short, and in fact, you can go straight to the head without doing anything else. But I'm going to get into a problem. I'm going to describe that problem once we finish this area. It's, I'm not sure what's going on, but really I'll, I'll go into detail on everything, but first... This, this is the cell. So the, the idea with this puzzle is that you have a finger pushing down, but the finger on the right goes up, so you have to time it. So that this finger 
goes down when this one goes up. It's very close. There we go. Alright, and we can exit the puzzle now, it's just going to repeat itself. That is very important, however, that in this next one, um, the clues that are revealed, I'm not sure what to do with. I'll just say that plain and simple, I'm not sure what to do with. And believe you me, it's, I don't know, I think it's kind of out of my hands, honestly. But maybe one of you can solve it? Anyway, this is really basically the last puzzle we're going to see. Please brace yourself. Um, it might be kind of scary. It's, it's really sudden, and I'd like to throw a caution out there. There is a swear word in this upcoming segment, but of course, cover your ears if you want to. And to anybody who has fears of anything to do with medicine, um, again, just cover your eyes, I suppose, and your ears, too. Here we go. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's there, but uh, again, very unique, very strange, I must say, but the amount of things they had to do for this game is kind of crazy, the amount of involvement they put in. So when you pay the $20, or I suppose when you would have paid the $20, when anybody would have paid the twenty dollars when it was still available. They were mostly paying for the involvement and the effort put into the game, not necessarily the game itself. And yeah, they just they worked a long time on this with the effects and everything, and they sacrificed a lot of their free time, etc. Which of course a lot of developers do nowadays, but it's different. And the spinning head is mostly where that comes into play. So I'll speak more about it when we get there. I'll be quiet as we speak to the man on the telephone. What's the matter? Something wrong with your eyes? Having difficulty seeing? Are you blind? Well, you'll have to feel your way in the dark. If you're lucky, you'll retrieve some important information. And he's not lying, folks. He's telling the truth. However, this is the other part of the clue, which I don't know what to do with. I know they're combined, and I know what the puzzle is. I don't know how to get to it. Anyway, maybe if I investigate around after this, it'll appear. But let's continue on for the time being. Through the upcoming door is 
my favorite part of the area in which I cannot see. I have to say, it's... It's good. The voice acting is good in this next area, in my opinion, compared to the rest of the things, but it's up to you to decide, honestly. And it's after the bees. Yow. Yow. That's not what I meant, but that's not bad either. I think we are here now, not sure. What? Not sure what's going on in that room. There we are. The nice classical jazz music. I suppose it wouldn't be classical jazz, but you understand what I mean, hopefully. And it's just a dinner setting. But it's the ambiance itself that's good. And listen to the people. Um, listen to what they have to say when I walk into them. Ow, you stepped on my foot. Ow, you stepped on my foot. Moving on. Randomly, there's a wall here. I don't know why, but there is. Oops. Missed one sound bite to the right. Hey, you spilled my drink! Hey, you spilled my drink! <laughs> I beg your pardon. 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 Ugh! I can't make out what that's saying. Point still stands. Best voice acting in the game, by far, right there. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but again, a little warning for this next area. It could be scary if you're not ready for it. <laughs> oh, it's actually after this. Yeah, the funny story behind this is that they actually broke glass and captured sound files of walking over glass. So these people literally, all these walking sounds you're hearing, they walked over glass and shoes. They walked in a corridor with shoes. They walked in a field with shoes. So everything you're hearing, they captured themselves. So they actually walked over glass. And here's what I was trying to warn you about, though honestly not that scary. Please. And there's an example of voice distortion technology, which might not have even existed all that much at the time, but surely a beta of some form was there. Anyway, listen to this sort of weird whirring motion while they're in the elevator. Going down. First floor. Watch your step on the way out. That just does not sound like an elevator to me. Maybe it's just me, or maybe it just does not sound anything like an elevator. But it's close enough. You can understand what it is, just because of the way and what the person is saying, and I guess they're sort of mocking the attendance on the old school elevators. Anyway, we will continue on, but I must again end this video for the YouTube time limit, so I will see you next time.